go to records. Come hang out, let's talk about records. say that it was not remastered whatsoever. It's like be forewarned. Um, sounds fucking great. It's heavy. Um, it's really, really good. I, it's just super bass heavy. Uh, the tone is really good. It's not just a nasty, stupid old uh, stupid death metal kind of thing. Uh, this rules. Uh, the, the release is called Incantations of Demonic Lust for Corpses of the Fallen. As you uh, may well know, this is an early Nuclear War Now release, um, number 17. Uh, and then there's an ins there's an look at this guy. Look at how many boobs are on that demon. I didn't. I thought demons only had four boobs. Uh, so yeah, this is great. You should be able to pick this up for like eight bucks. Uh, nice heavy jacket, great sound of vinyl. Um, like you might think that maybe there's some similarities with blasphemy or any of that like it's not there like i i know that blasphemy were around at this time period played shows with these guys in fact there's like flyers in here showing that they played with blasphemy um but it doesn't really sound that uh noisy or like structuralist um it doesn't just kind of get lost in the muddiness of it um it's really good i can't recommend this enough fell into my lap because it was bequeathed into my collection from one of my good buddies uh, I don't know why you 
So, oh, next. If that wasn't enough, as if that album was not enough. My homie Cal coming through. Uh, Messiah finally gained rights to releasing their own records on, I think their own imprint, having been um, distributed by High Roller Records. Just gotta double check my facts there. Uh, and man, this pressing is fucking gorgeous. Um, Messiah have a couple of great albums, him to a Gremlin, uh, the Street of Weather, of course. Um, and Messiah were a thrash metal band who I think kind of got from Switzerland, got kind of so fast and so vicious that kind of started to border on like black metal territory. Um, I extreme cold weather, um, context or not, um, I think influenced a lot of Immortal early couple of albums. Um, but this is more in the death metal direction. This album is called Choir of Horrors. I have loved this album for years and never had a copy of it. So, um, my buddy, look at that, look at how gorgeous that vinyl is. So, yeah, Messiah were great. I think some of these, um, my buddy Grimtooth it has got a lot of these copies into the States, but I think they might probably be dried up in his distro. You might find these on other uh, distros out there. But yeah, if you're not familiar with Messiah at all, you really can't go wrong with any of the first four albums. Rotten Parish may be the last one that I even know uh, or know very well. Uh, but yeah, killer artwork. What a great release. High Roller. I get these confused with Hammerheart and High Roller. They just kind of have these great reissue campaigns going on. And they just do such a great job. Gorgeous <clears throat> record. And if that was not enough, if you had your fill of unholy, rotten, disgusting noise, well, if you haven't, and you're like me, uh, Melting Rot with, yeah, Blood Delicious. Super fun, I love this cover. I would buy, I would buy a Celine Dion album if it had that fuck cover on it. Rules, so uh, last year I was watching Mulder play live at Regis in Chicago. Um, and this guest vocalist comes up on stage and we were all just like already in awe of how good Mulder was. Guest vocalist comes on and rips, rips everybody a brand new asshole. It's murderous. It's fucking brutal. It's unrelenting. It's so fucking fun. Um, I think a lot of, I noticed like a lot of guys who don't ordinarily uh, dabble in a lot of grindcore were singing the praises of this thing. As I am too. I've kind of been dabbling in some hardcore music. I know. It sounds weirder to me than you probably. Um, but I'm starting to kind of understand a little bit of the, the through line from hardcore to some of the newer death metal bands. And I think I like the kind of like the lineage from like 80s crust punk 
and the drumming style and the skanky kind of um, alternations between uh, uh, the skanks and the blasts. Um, I'm just a sucker for it, kind of always have been. Um, so there's a little bit of that in this. Um, and I had a friend of mine say, like, that's way too hardcore for you, buddy. And I was just like, is that why I love this? So I've been kind of dabbling in a little bit of hardcore. Don't at me. Uh, the homie, Pat, from Ground, Asheville, North Carolina, Salem, sent me a care package the other day, and I've been digging through it. The main reason he's been sending out uh, care packages to VCLT is to um, us vinyl community nerd losers um, is because he is evangelical and supportive of a, plan, a band, not a band, called Blessed Awful from Boston. They're a death metal outfit with a couple of releases under their belt. So um, I believe he sent me every single thing that they have ever released. You've got these two LPs. This is a single-sided 12-inch uh, with two tracks and a Uriah Heap cover, which is really, really fucking good. Um, and then this is a split with innumerable forms. Uh, innumerable forms, I think, is kind of like a pre-dreaming. What is that? Dreaming death. I can't remember. Yeah, no, dream. I don't know. Dream on ending. That's it. Dream on ending. Big fan. Uh, I believe that guy is in innumerable forms. Some tomb. I don't know. I don't know at all. But bless the awful are gnarly, riffy. Gross, uh, death metal. Hard to like kind of pigeonhole what their like micro niche is. There really isn't one. They're just death metal. They're kind of slow-ish sometimes. They can play fast too. Um, I really like the variation in the styles going on. It's not super wanky or technical. It's just fucking chunky, heavy as shit. Great tone. Uh, and these were great. So I still have yet to get through. Uh, set of them and set a CD too, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, that was awesome. I don't know, understand, like I've never heard anybody else talk about this band Blessed Awful. I believe they just have kind of like three or four releases with a couple of songs each on them, so maybe a body of work with like 10 songs between them. They've laid the groundwork for a debut album, which I'm sure is going to be awesome. Uh, is that rules? I think you, Pat. Um, I'll probably get to the other releases um, in one of the next videos. I'm trying, if you haven't been aware already, uh, to get through like the last three months of albums that I've got in by various ways, um, ten albums at a time. So I'm trying to crank out as many videos as I can until that is done, and then we can get into something new. I'm kind of itching to get back into the from the vault stuff. But this was bequeathed to me by the homie Cal, Grim Tooth's Very Metal Things. By the way, if you want to sign up for his distro list, he gets a ton of like exclusive things that you couldn't get from any other distros in the United States. Shoot him an email, uh, you, can get, you can get on his catalog list. Uh, which, by the way, I uh, twilighted um, and an interview in this issue, by the way, did Messiah, I wrote this, um, there's a little picture of your guy right there, Brain Smasher, there's Nightmare Imagery, and there's the homie, there's the guy, the CEO of Riffs. So, uh, I did this, uh, interview with, uh, Arctic Serenades, a couple pages here, uh, very interesting label, it's like a Doom Death, uh, label from Norway and the uh, mid 90s so get a copy of this I'm gonna be uh, writing stuff in the next one as well um, so anyways this was in his distro uh, prosthetic records put this in front Ruo out the album is called rights of the nameless um, had not heard from these guys since they put out I think the obsidian tongue split on Bindrun, which was awesome by the way I got to hang out with Brenda from Upsetting your tongue last weekend. Um, all about the tangents. Gotta stop the tangents. So this is just like straight down the road, American black metal. Great riffs. It's kind of speedy. Uh, it's just it's just really, really well written. Good stuff. Middle of the road kind of stuff. Nothing like 
know, singling out uh, influences is really going to do a whole lot for you. But these guys are great. Um, I remember being really impressed with the uh, album they did for Bindroom. Uh, and it's cool to hear them kind of continuing on. I believe they like, did a little mini tour with Wolves in the Throne Room this year, last year, somewhere around there. Um, so they're kind of making their, they're making the rounds. Um, picked up this Bestat Hellstorm LP uh, Undercover Records put this out in 2001, I want to say. Polish black metal. Um, you know what? This, this is okay. Um, <laughs> This has just kind of always been like the poor man's dark funeral or something. Honestly, like this is probably sketchy because they don't have any good riffs. Um, it's, it's just kind of there, yeah. Um, I feel like maybe if this had a better mix to it, the riffs may be, like the nuances in the riffs may be a little bit more discernible, uh, but it's just a muddy wash of very boring, uninteresting, uninspired black metal. Um, so I don't need to spend a whole lot of time on it. It's it's okay. This, however, uh, this is a kind of a kind of an uphill battle to listen to in a good way. Uh, this has been a weird challenge for me. Uh, the band is called Exist. The album is called Egoista, uh, and this. Let's just get it right out of the door. It sounds a lot like Cynic. We talked about Cynic two videos ago. Um, I'm kind of on a little bit of a Cynic kick. Very, very skilled, technical, progressive death metal. We don't really know much about these guys. Um, I, in fact, I had never heard of these guys until <laughs> I got this from Grimtooth, Very Metal Things. Where do you see this vinyl? I don't ordinarily like to, you know, jerk off about the colors and all that, but this thing is insane. So it has this like reflective luminescent quality to it, but then you can also like see through it. I'm not sure if this is actually working and you can see the vibe that it's given, but gorgeous vibe. Anyways, yeah, it's super technical. It's very progressive. There's a lot of kind of like softer, more delicate experimental kinds of parts. In fact, these guys are not on Metal Archives, um, and I'm kind of wondering if it's because they have this like policies like, your albums must be at least 51% metal in order for us to consider you on the archives. Which, fucking whatever. You got, got more teeth on there. Um, but yeah, this is, it's complex. It is very complex. It's the kind of thing that can, like, I still haven't been able to just sit down, put this on, uh, and give it my full attention, uh, because it's very, very challenging. It's not in a bad way, it's just not ordinarily the kind of thing that I um, spend much time listening to, but it's impressive. I'll, I'll leave it at that. What's not impressive is this fucking garbage pressing of Troubles goddamn skull. Uh, I kind of regret this, so I was thumbing through the bins at my local store the other day, and I believe they had one of the new Hammerheart reissues of the skull, and it was something like 24 bucks. I was kind of watching the wallet that day. That day. Um, I just pressing for $18, and I just went, yeah, let's just get the cheap one. Um, and I don't necessarily say I, I wouldn't necessarily say I regret the purchase, I just think that this pressing is so absolute shit that I feel bad that anybody would own this thing. This, like, the logo is gone. This is what you're getting. Trouble. Times New Roman. The Skull. Times New Roman. You got another copy of the album cover. Smaller, mind you. There's no lineup info. There's no... Okay, the song titles are really tiny on the back there. No lyrics, no notes know anything. It's got the album cover twice on the back. There's nothing here. If you're going to go to the effort of presenting a classic album in an updated printing or pressing, um, give it some love. Make it a little bit more valuable 
than just owning a piece of shit. Like, this is why people download music. There's nothing here but a slap of wax. And this album is fucking phenomenal. If you don't know Troubles the Skull for some reason, it's one of the greatest heavy metal records there ever was. Trouble are absolute doom gods. They influenced doom, but honestly, I think what their strongest suits were is just like great heavy metal. Chunky, kind of mid paced kind of riffs that you want to just bang your fucking head to. Great band. They were so great. Uh, but this pressing just. Trouble deserves a better pressing than this one. Let's just say that. So. This is my third time through this album, and this is the last album we're going to talk about, and I really, really, really like this. Um, I, a friend of mine plays drums in this band, and I saw it on his social media a couple years ago when it came out, 2017, I think. Give it a little bit of a listen, and I was like, this is really good. Um, and I never really got around to picking it up until I was at his Eroding Winds shop in Oshkosh, Wisconsin back in April. Um, and I just, it just snapped, I was just like, ooh, Adam, you played in this band, can't really remember what it was called, but you played drums in it and it was really good, can I get that? Picked it up, and I love it, listen to it, like I said, this is my third time through now, not ordinarily the kind of thing that I would be dipping my toes into, right? Um, I feel like this is kind of a neurosis -y kind of deal, um, a lot of the bands that my buddy Adam is into, I don't really fuck with, like, he, you know, he runs Gilead Media, but all like stuff like that. Mismore, which is kind of lost on me, um, but this just has some really, really emotionally disparative feelings about it. It's so agonized and distraught, and it just, um, there's a statement in here, actually, I'll read it, I think, that just kind of sums up the way it sounds to me. Uh, and it really just speaks to how it draws you in. And it says, these works exist as a tangible product of our tortured hearts, our inner turmoil, and our strained relationships. With the completion of this album, we intend to provide a vessel in which these negative energies can exist separately from ourselves, captured and isolated, before their ruinous hooks are set too deeply. We hope this vessel gives us the ability to carry on, to feel love, and to simply exist. Uh, I just feel like that's so that's put so blatantly and bluntly, um, but yeah, this just it it's delivered, performed, written, and executed and recorded in such an honest manner that I'm just hooked to it. I'm I'm immediately drawn to it. It definitely has some uh, doomier kind of stylistic qualities to it, but it just sounds sad. It sounds like people engaging in a release of sorrow in a cathartic moment of exertion. Uh, it's it's great. Cavern Light, if I didn't say the band. It's called As We Cup Our Hands and Drink From the Stream of Our Ache. Really, really good. I hope you uh, enjoyed that and maybe pick up some of these fine heavy metal records. And with that, I leave you, I bid you adieu, goodbye. <laughs> Well, that was a great video and it was made possible mostly by me but also thanks to the never-ending undying love and support of my patreon subscribers some of whom are if you would like to be a part of supporting my channel and encouraging me to make more content that's as good as the one you just watched join the patreon it's six dollars and 66 cents a month and uh, I would appreciate your support. Thanks for watching either way.